talking with House District 28 State Representative Candidate Dan Gassaway. He, of course, served as the House District 28 Representative for six years and uh, has recently been embroiled in, as many of you know, uh, a series of lawsuits over the um, Republican primaries held in 2018. Uh, Dan, thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. We wanted to take time ahead of the April 9th election to give voters a chance to hear from you directly. We're going to talk about the lawsuits, but more importantly, we're going to look ahead at what it is you're campaigning on and what you're campaigning for. And so to get into the conversation, let's start with the hot topic, if you will, of these election lawsuits. Now, there's been a lot said out in the public about the cost of these lawsuits to taxpayers, not just in House District 28, but in the counties of Habersham, Stevens, and Banks. And I'd like to start by asking you why you did it. Why did you file the lawsuits after the May 22nd primary and the one on December 4th? Well, the May 22nd primary was filed because we found out there was a bunch of people who should be able to vote for me that weren't given the right ballot in Habersham County. And we, of course, brought that to the county's attention pretty rapidly, but the county chose to not do the right thing, instead to fight me in court because and it goes back to the, some county commissioners are very uh, upset because I've defeated them in previous elections and they just don't want to do the right thing for me. And that's really what it comes down to. But, but anybody in America could see by the 15th day of June, that election had to be redone. As far as the second election, uh, they counted fraudulent ballots in Habersham County intentionally on uh, the seventh day of December or I would have won the election. As we proved in the court case, I did actually win the December 4 election uh, by two votes, and we proved that in court. Now, I believe I won by a lot more than two, but we proved in court I won the election by two votes. And yet still, you are battling public perception and the, the idea that's been framed out there in the public that you're the one costing taxpayers money. How do you respond? Well, I think you have to look at the facts. Uh, certainly an illegal election and people conducting illegal elections are who cost the taxpayers money. The people who voted illegally in December cost the taxpayers money. The county has the ability to uh, try to attach penalties to these illegal voters and recover some of these funds if they choose to. But I'm not, I, I'm, I'm the messenger but the, 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 who caused the problem, the first case was the Habersham County Board of Elections. The second case were the illegal voters in Habersham County. Now, those voters can be prosecuted. And in other cases in this area in the past, they have been prosecuted. So I don't know that that's over with. But that's who really caused it. The Habersham County Board of Elections caused the first problem, and illegal voters in Habersham County caused the second problem that you're being blamed. That I'm being blamed for both of them, yes. What have these legal battles cost you and your family? Well, so far we've paid over $100,000 in money, and not to mention the stress and the constant criticism, but if you're gonna put your name on the ballot to try to be elected, and people don't get the right ballot that should have, should be able to vote for you, and for whatever reason, they don't get the right to vote for you, you must stand up for those people, you know, and, and that's how I see this. And the cost to you and your family? It's been vicious. I mean, I've been attacked uh, constantly because I, I think there are people who see the truth, but I, the ones who don't are, are very, very nasty. And they're, of course, my supporters' opponents who wanted him to win. That's, that's a natural thing that you, you want your guy to win. I, my people want me to win. But... Uh, I think we've got to look at the bigger picture. Do we want to have people in office that are legally elected and honestly elected, or do we just want it to be a crapshoot? Now, you recently filed a motion seeking to recoup the cost of your legal fees. If the court grants that motion, then the defendants who are in this case, the Habersham, Stevens, and Banks County Election Boards, your political opponent, Chris Irwin, um, and also you mentioned Banks County Sheriff Speed in that motion, um, they'll be required to reimburse you. No, that's not accurate. The only people that are named in the motion for fees are Mr. Irwin and the Habersham County Election Board. 
And then there was another motion filed that had the sheriff's name attached to it. No, that has nothing to do with fees. Okay, then I stand corrected on that. Let's go back. The defendants, including the Habersham, Stevens, and Banks County Election Boards, and your political opponent, Chris Irwin, would be required to reimburse you. Now, that seems like a pretty bold move in the midst of an election, a, a very hotly contested election, and especially when so much has been said about the cost to taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Why did you file these motions, and what do you say to those who want to frame it, once again, as though it's just about costing the taxpayers money? Well, you have a deadline on when you can file these motions. We uh, filed motions back in December with the Mr. Irwin, the Habersham Election Board, the Stevens Election Board, the Banks Election Board, all telling them that, that we had met the legal standard for the election to be redone. We asked them all to concede to a new election, save us all costs. We provided all of our evidence. They refused. Then the 1st of January, we again asked them to concede. We showed them the evidence. We provided them with legal documents to do the right thing. And again, they all refused and demanded a courtroom trial. We told them, again, here is the evidence. There's, you know, unless you can refute this evidence in court, we're gonna have to seek attorney fees if you're going to demand court trial. And they're like a criminal who wants a jury trial to try to get off of a, when they're clearly guilty, and that's how they've acted in this case. Uh, and we proved it in court like we said we would, and now we're doing what we told them in December we were gonna do, which is make them pay. Now it's unfortunate that these commissioners have been so stubborn, and Mr. Irwin's lawyer is, is a, not a very weak lawyer and doesn't look at facts, and that's who's cost us money. But I cannot let them cost my family all this money because they can fall back on the taxpayers. If the Habersham County Board of Commissioners were paying out of their own pocket, they would have made different choices in December than they've made. Now you have a strong contingent of elected officials um, speaking out against you, supporting your opponent. There's also been a number of media outlets uh, that have expressed similar interests in the race. With such seemingly insurmountable odds, with so much opposition and, 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 and so much negativity out there, my question to you is twofold. First, why do you think the opposition is so strong? And secondly, can you overcome it? Well, uh, I'll answer the second question first. Yes, we can and we will. The first question, why? I think that uh, all of these people, that are, whether it's the sheriffs or the county commissioners, they do not want to be held accountable by anyone. They want to operate without any oversight, they don't want anyone questioning what they do, and uh, unfortunately for them, I question what they do, especially when I see them squandering taxpayer money. And that's why they're against me to the single one. Every one of them is against me because I question what they do. And instead of having a public debate about this and saying, this is why I did what I did, and me say, this is why I think you made a mistake, they would rather just scream that, I'm a liar and try to discredit me, but I've not seen them, any of them, bring forward any evidence to counter my claims against their mismanagement of taxpayer money. And if they want to bring it now, I'd love to see it, whether it's Stacy Hall, Natalie Crawford, any of the other commissioners that are squandering the citizens' money that say they're not, I would like to see the proof. I want to touch on that briefly and then move on into the campaign issues, you talk about squandering money. Can you be a little more specific on that? Well, sure. I mean, there's a, there's examples recently with the Habersham School Board just this week where they sold a piece of property because they were in a financial tie, and so they had to fire sell a piece of property that the public owned at a, at a, a multi-million dollar discount from what the public had invested in it. You know, why on earth do you do something like that without uh, thorough study and why was it not advertised? Why was it not marketed effectively? Why did it have to be done so quickly? Well, my guess is because they've wasted a lot of money on the renovations at Hazel Grove and Woodville, renovations that need to be done. But because they didn't bid those renovations, the price went up and then they were broke. And 
that was my whole argument against these no bid contracts that they like to do now in Habersham County. But we also have wasted money in Stevens County. We have wasted money in Banks County. Uh, and we can go on and on about that. But these commissioners are against me because I ask questions they don't want to answer. Let's shift to your record. Now you served as the House District 28 representative for six years. And during that time, what were some of your biggest accomplishments? Well, uh, when I was first elected, the biggest issue I had was with an operation in Stevens County that was uh, basically providing or inundating the community with some horrific odors. This operation had come from Habersham County and it moved to Stevens County and it kind of moved into the middle of town between two schools and it was an inappropriate land use, but because they didn't have zoning in Stevens County, it was allowed in there by the county commissioners and proceeded to be a, a huge economic drain on the community as well as a horrific uh, problem for the citizens. And so I had to work to find a solution to that problem uh, and, and I was able to do that. Uh, there's been some other, it's Banks County, uh, when I was first elected, Banks County had the absolute worst defects facility in Georgia. Number one worst dilapidated facility. Um, and, and the defects people have to do a lot of important work and they need a decent office. So I was able to get a new office for the Banks County defects uh, group. Uh, Habersham County, of course, I share this county with another representative. And so a lot of the things we do here are maybe he takes credit for, which is fine because I have two whole counties. But I think those are two of the accomplishments that I look back on and am proud of. There's others. We we got the uh, road from Tacoa to Livonia finally finished after 40 years. That was a very positive thing. Um, so there's some, some things I look back on that I know were made this community better. Now as you look forward, and here you are again campaigning, trying to reclaim the seat that you briefly lost to Irwin because he actually did take over as the House District 28 representative for two weeks uh, prior to the, the right. ruling in February that vacated the seat. But um, as you look forward, what is it that you hope to accomplish? What do you see as the most pressing issues facing the constituents of House District 28? Well, I, I really believe right now is I bring a fiscal conservative perspective to this community. And that's, uh, I think, what's missing. I don't think we have fiscal conservatives on any of the county commissions. And I know I'm, I'm supposed to be nice to everybody when I'm trying to get votes, but we have to differentiate ourselves. And my opponent is not a fiscal conservative. And I think that's why uh, these other commissioners and sheriffs sort of gravitate toward him because he is a, a tax and spend type person. That's his record as Banks County School Superintendent. But although we're in good economic times now, I remember hard economic times, and I remember how hard it were, was for the citizens when these hard economic times come. And I think we have to be constantly aware that an economic downturn could be around the corner and we have to manage taxpayer money and respect taxpayer money, intent, you know, expecting a downturn. Now, given the charges that have been leveled against you in the court of public opinion mm -hmm. about wasting taxpayer money on lawsuit. It, it might strike some as a bit ironic that you're saying that. Well, from my perspective and from the perspective of most objective people, the county commissions were the ones that caused this problem. This should have never cost any money. They should have looked at the evidence, realized the elections had to be redone, and conceded to it. We should have had enough time to have 10 elections before December if they had done the right thing instead of wanting to fight me. And, and that's really, it was a personal thing. There's, there's no objective person outside of here that looks at the evidence and, and doesn't say, why did they not just concede to a new election immediately? Habersham County mailed the letters to citizens on the 15th day of June saying they had messed up enough votes to have to redo it. Why did they not on the 16th day of June say, yes, we made a mistake and we want to redo it. We want to do the right thing. But instead, they decided to fight it in court for three months and cost me a lot of money and cost others. And, and they have a track record of this. This is not the first time. The Habersham County Airport litigation is another example of this that the citizens don't know about where the taxpayers had to pay a tremendous legal fee 
uh, on a similar situation. Back on the topic of campaign issues and, and why, you know, as hard as this road has been, it's hard to fathom why either you or Irwin would 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 want to to, to stay in in this um, political fight, and yet here you are. What is it that you're fighting for? What are the issues um, that you want to get taken care of if you are reelected to House District 28? Well, this election challenge has has brought some new things to light that I was unaware of, and. So there are some new election-related things that I would like to see. I mean, w w the problems that my team found with these elections can be fixed very easily. And we need to implement these fixes statewide. We need to put state oversight in so that the state is watching what local registrars do a little more closely. Because I've learned through this process, there's not a lot of state oversight. Now, there's, there's been a lot of blame put on the Secretary of State's office for controlling elections. I think that's the furthest thing from the truth. They're an aggregator of the information. The elections are run and controlled by the county registrars and the county election officials. So the Georgia Secretary of State has very limited impact currently on elections in Georgia. Uh, the other things, again, are, um, you know, I had some legislation about, uh, I had a bill to basically make it illegal for county commissioners to buy their own property. Now that seems like a pretty, to vote to buy their own property. That's, that was an ethics related bill. I would like to continue to push that legislation. It's not popular with county commissioners. That may be another reason all these county commissioners are lining up against me. But all I was saying is the county commissioner cannot vote to buy their own property. The counties can still buy their property. We just don't want them voting. And right now we had a case where that happened here in Habersham County a few years ago where a county commissioner voted to buy his own property and the taxpayers end up losing millions of dollars on that over time. So those are the kind of things I'd like to work on. Uh, there's some water quality issues I want to continue to work on as far as uh, water protection with stream buffers. I'm on the I'm an officer on the National Natural Resources Committee, and those are some other issues. But there's a lot of things that I'm interested in, a lot of legislation I feel like is positive for citizens. But mainly I want to continue to be a conservative fiscal voice for the Citizens 28th District. I want to touch on a couple of issues that have gotten a lot of headlines of late. One, the first being medical marijuana. What's your position on that? Well, I've been a supporter of legally controlled medical cannabis from, from when Alan Peake first started this conversation. I, I have constituents in my district who are benefiting greatly from this, and the fact that they have to get this medicine illicitly to help their children is not something I think is a good thing for Georgia. So I have been a supporter, and that is another reason why the Sheriff's Association is out to get me, because this is one of the things the Sheriff's Association is not for. And we can talk about the why, but the reality is we know that children are being helped, and I don't think, this, I think the state of Georgia needs to find a way so these children can continue to be helped without being lawbreakers. So the legislation now pending uh, in the Georgia General Assembly for the cultivation of mar medical marijuana, you would support that? They've been cultivating medical marijuana legally in Mississippi in a federal facility for the past 30 years. So why can they do it in Mississippi and we cannot do it in Georgia? I don't, I don't, there's, I don't think there's a good answer for that. You know, w we can do anything we want if, if we just put our minds to it. And I think there's a lot of children being helped, and I think we need to push it. Casinos, that was one of the topics that you were addressing when you were still in the state house. Where do you stand on gambling in Georgia? Well, I have, I'm not personally a gambler. I don't, uh, I'm not judging anybody. It's just not my thing. And I really have been reluctant to support putting it on the ballot because all polling says if it goes on the ballot, it passes. So once it's put on the ballot, the question's over with. There's, there's not, you know, there's not a question at that point. So then you got to ask yourself, well, are you in the way of the people? You know, sixty percent of the citizens, sixty-five percent of the citizens in Georgia want it. Just because I have a personal uh, problem, or, or I, I don't think it's not my thing. But if sixty-five percent of the citizens want it, then 
you know, is the ballot the best best way? I don't know. I I, I don't think it's a long term good thing for Georgia, but I think sixty five percent of citizens really want it. So that's where it leaves you. Would you support putting it on a ballot? I'd have to be there to, at the point and, and see the details of the bill. You know, the devil's in the details. Not, we're, casino gambling is one thing. How are we going to do it? Where's the money going to go? There's a lot of other details that I'd like to know specifically how they're going to be handled before I could answer that question. A very emotional issue, of course, is abortion. The heartbeat bill that is being considered. I hope it's passed by now. Is that something that you support? And do you support exceptions for abortion in the case of rape, incest, or the life of the mother? Well, I have been endorsed by Georgia Right to Life in this race as well as, uh, I think, every race I've ever run. So th those are some of their questions, and they have endorsed me. So I would say uh, I meet the standard. As far as the litmus test, you know, there's... There, it's easy to tick off the questions, but then when, you know, the, there's four pages of detail behind each one. So I, I won't know exactly what, the life of the mother certainly, uh, nobody, we want to always say the life of the mother. What they'll say is, well, very rarely is, uh, or, or never is what they'll say, is the life of the mother jeopardized to the point where it requires an abortion. So you know, those kind of things, those kind of questions are, too too edged. So if you say yes, I support the exception, but yet you'll hear people argue that that never happens. So why do you even need the exception? But I have a solid pro life record. Medicaid expansion. Do you support the initiatives that Governor Kemp supports as far as limited Medicaid expansion here in Georgia? Yes, I think that Governor Kemp is taken a very important leadership role in several fronts, including the last one you mentioned, uh, as well as this issue, straight out of the block. I mean, he's only been in office a month and he's changing course for Georgia on both of these issues in a very positive way, in my opinion. What about the uninsured in Georgia? We choose not to expand Medicaid at 100%, at 100% at what the federal limit allows under the Affordable Care Act, which does leave still hundreds of thousands of Georgians uninsured. What about them? Well, I think we've always had uninsured. I think we're going to have to continue to work on that issue. You know, we used to have county health departments in the, in the 60s and 70s, and I think that we need to find a way to get back to that. But, you know, it's also on the citizens. You know, the government is not, the role of government is not to take care of everybody. The role of government is to put people in a position to succeed, encourage people to work, and to take care of those who can't take care of themselves. But there's a lot of able-bodied people that just choose to not work, not be insured. You know, we, we, cannot, we cannot babysit adults in this country. But what about the pharmaceutical companies, what about the health care companies, the cost of health care? Uh, you may work 40, 80 hours a week, but if your wage is so low that it and your employer doesn't provide it, you still can't afford health care. So there is a gap there where, okay, I'm working, but I still can't afford it. What do we do about those people? Well, I think, again, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, we had local health departments. I think there are ways that we can provide uh, facilities to serve those people besides the emergency room uh, in communities, and I think we can work toward that, and I think we are working toward that. I think uh, telemedicine is expanding. I think this, this problem has been coming, and Obamacare was one party's stab at trying to solve it and I think the Republican Party is also now that that President Trump is in office is also looking at how do we solve this but also how do we encourage these people to go to work how do you encourage health care costs 
to come down. Does the government in Georgia bear any responsibility in trying to make health care more affordable for its citizens? Well, you brought up pharmaceuticals, okay? Well, you see President Trump dealing with that issue on a national level. There's nothing the state can do about pharmaceutical companies. That is a federal issue. So there are three pharmaceutical lobbyists in Washington for every federal legislator. So that's where that battle is really fought, is in Washington, D.C. We can encourage our congressmen to be more aggressive toward pharmaceutical uh, lobbyists and, and pharma overcharging pharmaceutical companies. But we finally see leadership from the president. President Trump is finally saying enough of Americans paying three times as much for the same drugs as, as Europe is paying. And that's got to stop. So I, we're seeing leadership from the White House. We have not seen from the Congress. And you're, so does that absolve the state of any ability to mitigate the cost of health care in Georgia? Not just with pharmaceuticals, but with health care in general. I mean, I know well, that I think that there's things, there's certainly things that we can do to reduce costs. But I think as a state, we have to encourage people to get out and work. We have to encourage people to be healthy. You know, everybody has rights and everybody has a certain freedom. But if you choose to, you know, smoke 12 packs a day, you're not choosing to be healthy. And it's not the government's role to be your nanny. But there are consequences to those things. And it's not the government's role to take care of you when it goes bad. It's just like a teenager driving a car at 100 miles an hour. It's not healthy behavior. And sometimes it just doesn't work out. Let's jump to the uh, CON regulations. I know that there's been some discussion of that, um, easing up on those regs so that rural hospitals um, don't have quite as many hoops to jump through and that, you know, there are lawmakers who say that, you know, if they, if they ease up on the, the uh, certificate of need regulations that exist in Georgia, then that's going to help rural health care. Do you support that notion and do you support the plan to do that? Well, of course, that bill's still in flux as, as we're doing this interview, and I'm not really sure where that's going to end up. What I think we'll see is a steady uh, expansion or a steady reduction of hospitals that are protected under CON. I think we'll see a gradual reduction of that. And I think, for the most part, a, a gradual reduction is the appropriate way because everybody in the marketplace has to adjust. And... You know, we can't just wholesale do away with CON because it would create such market dislocation that there would be winners and losers we don't see. So the best thing to do is to move cautiously. But based on the consolidation in health care, I think that uh, CON is in its twilight. And on a more local level, as we start to wrap up here, can you list for me one issue, one item, one project that you would address in each of the counties, Habersham, Stevens, Banks, if you're reelected to the State House of Representatives? Well, of course, as a representative, you really don't get into local projects. You're more representing the people on legislation and, and trying to get some appropriations done for your community. Certainly, I will continue to do what I've been doing, which is uh, try to get money from my district that is spent appropriately. For example, the Dix Hill Parkway that's been dragging around for two years now not fixed. That's a county road. We were able to get some money to get that started and the commissioners continue to drag their feet on that, unbeknownst to me, I, I cannot understand it. Uh, you know, there's always positive things. There's some economic development things in this county that I would like to uh, see done if we had some willing partners. In Habersham. Yeah, in Banks County, uh, I continue to want to see road improvements done at Banks Crossing to try to reduce the, the dangerous intersections there because I really believe if that's not fixed, eventually the DOT is going to put medians through that whole area and it's going to make it uh, very tough on the business owners down there. So those are some of the things. I'd like to see us continue to get our share of the transportation money in Northeast Georgia. It does seem that our roads are increasingly bad uh, our state roads and um, there are some resurfacing being done on uh, Georgia 15 um, on the northern end of Habersham into Raven County but overall um, you know with the weather the way it's been and just the time um, these roads have taken a beating and even though we passed that 
that huge transportation mm -hmm. bill several years ago while you were still in office. Right. We don't see the evidence of those dollars. Well, I think we're starting to. Uh, and that was the point. I voted for that bill. Representative Rogers voted for that bill. The idea is if you voted for it, your district would get some projects. And uh, that's another thing I would like to make sure still happens. We are starting to see transportation improvements in, in the area. If you're 441, for example, they're doing a lot of patching so they can pave the whole thing because it had been let go so long, they had to actually go back and do patching prior to a, a whole paving job. And that was the whole state. We, we got behind during the Great Recession on our road upkeep, and it's gonna take a while to catch up, but I think that, the, that we're doing a better job. In conclusion, I wanna circle back around to Georgia's elections. Yeah. We touched on it briefly earlier, but obviously this is something that you have become personally very knowledgeable about. Right. What do you propose, if elected, and even if not, if you were to win, or rather lose the election on April 9th, what do you intend to do to ensure voting integrity in Georgia? Well, I'm talking with Mary Norwood, who was a can twice candidate for mayor of Atlanta and lost two very close races about forming an organization that's a counter organization to Ms. Abrams. Basically what Ms. Abrams wants to do is, uh, and some of the people in Habersham County support her, want to uh, loosen electoral protections. I want to see our laws strengthened. I want to see the laws that we have enforced. That's what was not happening here in Habersham County. They were not enforcing laws that were on the books. They were not following laws that are on the books. So I want to see the laws that we have on the books enforced and followed. And then I want to work to uh, clean up this illegal voting that's going on around the state. It's not just here, it's around the state. Uh, my data expert is, is, as soon as our litigation is over, is going to be going to work for Secretary of State Raffensperger in a consultant capacity. And uh, I, they've, they've already had their meetings, it's, we have to get this litigation behind us so that he's still not working for me too. And I, he knows exactly what needs to be done and I feel like they'll be able to implement this rapidly. And one of the measures that Judge David Sweat took prior to uh, calling this latest primary election uh, was that he allowed both you and Chris Irwin to vet the voter rolls. Basically, mm -hmm. you were able to look at who's registered in your district and issue any challenges ahead of time, done so with the hope that that would avoid any problems on the back end. You were allowed to do that. You challenged some of those voters. Are you satisfied with the outcome? And are you satisfied that this election is being properly administered? Well, after us going through their roles for the past nine months, we, my team had basically cleaned up the roles pretty well before we got into this last phase of it. We did find 20 or 30 uh, voters that uh, we had some that had been dead 10 years that were still on the rolls and voting and you know that's problematic uh, but what we hope is that the voters also will pay attention because we had voters in Habersham County voting illegally knowing they were voting illegally so as a voter you have a, a, a legal right to vote but you also have an ethical responsibility to vote in an election you're entitled to vote in. you should not be voting in an election that you know you're not supposed to vote in. So we have a right to vote. Every citizen that's legal in this country and registered has a right to vote, but the citizens also have a responsibility to know that they're voting in the right place and voting in the right election. Do you anticipate filing another lawsuit? No, I, this, this is a, uh, we're not gonna do that. Win, lose, or draw, we're not gonna do that because it's just been too hard on my family. The only reason we did this second one was because we had it proven within three days and we thought the Habersham County government would do the right thing and immediately concede to a new election without dragging it out again. And we're still shocked that they did that. And finally, what is it that you would like to say directly to the voters of House District 28? Well, what I would say is I would like the opportunity to continue to represent you as, as your conservative voice. Now I'm gonna ask questions of your county commissioners and your sheriffs and your city council people that are gonna make them nervous, 
and your school board because they don't want to answer hard questions. But they're very quick to criticize the taxpayer funding or lack of that comes from the state level to the local level. And if you're going to be critical at state level, I feel like I deserve to be critical at the local level. And, and if, you, if you don't want a guy who's going to ask questions, I'm not the right guy for you. But if you want somebody who's going to stand up for your interests and ask questions and, and hard questions if they need to be asked, then, then vote for me. Dan Gasway, candidate for House District 28 State Representative. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Remember folks, early voting is now underway and the election is April 9th. Polls will be open throughout the district from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m.